I'm telling you, we all have these things in our lives, points of pain, whatever it is. It just won't go away, and we're, we're wrestling with this. And, and come on, we're praying the prayers, and it's not changing. And because of that, this is the very thing that causes a lot of us to struggle with even believing in God altogether. Because how could a loving God, compassionate, caring God, who cares so much about his people, allow his people to go through stuff like that? So some of us, it's like, this is why I can't believe. For those of us that do, though, we believe, but we do exactly what Paul's doing here. We reach out to God and we say, God, I'm dying here. Take it away, take it away, take it away. We don't just pray it once or twice or three times. We pay it, pray it over a season of time in our life. And it doesn't go away, and we find ourselves starting to get frustrated, a little angry with God. Maybe we shake our fists. We tell him if we were God, we'd do a much better job than he's doing. We give him some good godly advice. What is going on inside of us? What are we really looking for? The answer is so simple. We're looking for performance. God, I just need you to do what it is that I'm asking you to do. It's how we pray. It's how we pray. Just think about it. Your girlfriend calls you. She says, I'm late. And you know she's not talking about dinner. What do you do in that moment? Let me tell you what you do. It doesn't matter if you haven't been in church in 20 years. It doesn't matter if you haven't prayed in 15 years. haven't even thought about God in 15 years. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, no. Oh, God. Right? Help me. Help me. I need you right now, God. And you start making all kinds of promises, Right? God, I need you to do something here. And so I promise you, get the Bible out, blow the dust off. You know, it's like, oh, Genesis 1, God, I'm going to read through my Bible in a year. I promise you, I promise you this. If you would just what? Here's what you're not looking for in that moment. Listen, listen. Hey, uh, I I promise you, I'm going to see you through the pregnancy. You're going to marry her. It's going to be okay. That's not what you're looking for. What are you looking for in that moment? You're looking for performance, not a promise. You look up one night, and there's a cop behind you. Police officer on your tail. Which wouldn't really be a problem, except happy hour became happy hours for you. Right? You spend hours at the bar. You know you shouldn't be driving. In that moment, what do you do? Oh, no. Oh, God. Right? Please, I don't want him to crash into another car, but please make him veer off the road. Make this police officer go away. Right? Make the cop car disappear. I need a miracle here, God. What are you looking for? You're not looking for God to say to you, hey, you know what? I'm going to see you through this DUI process, through the conviction. You're going to spend a couple nights in jail, but it's going to be okay. Now, you, need God, you want God to perform here. You get a call from your friend. He says, you know what? I saw your wife today at lunchtime. I didn't really want to call you, but I felt like as a friend I had to. And she's having lunch with this really good-looking young guy. And it wasn't like they weren't close. You could tell they really are connected. And all of a sudden, boom, your heart just sinks in your chest. Come on, we all have those moments, right? We all have those kind of moments. And in that moment, it's like, God, there is absolutely nothing I can do There's nothing I can do. I am absolutely powerless here, and so I need, I really need you to do something. Please do something for me. And sometimes what happens? He does something. Your girlfriend, she calls you back. She says, whoop, false alarm. I had the flu. Wow. And the police officer, he pulls you over, and he walks up to the car, and he looks in the window. He says, sir, you have a taillight out. Get it fixed. Merry Christmas. This stuff never happens to me, by the way, but but just play along. (laughs) All right? Or your wife comes home from work, she says, you'll never believe who I ran into today and ended up having lunch with, my gay cousin John. (laughs) And all of a sudden you're like, I love John. I've always loved John. John's my fave, man. He's just, oh, John, you're awesome. What happens? All of a sudden hope just comes, boom, crashing down. It's like the clouds have lifted and there's hope again and you you are happy. You've been set free. You are no longer what? Dependent on God at all. And so you drop to your knees, and what do you do? You, 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 you say, God, I promise you I'm going to go be a missionary. No, nobody does that, right? That's not real. You don't do that. What do you do? You forget and you move on with your life. Why? Why? Because we find hope in performance, not in promises. And God knows that. He created us. And he knows that with Paul, too. And so he says to Paul, he says, I know what you're asking for. And listen, I know you say you trust me. In fact, you're going to write that down, and millions of people are going to read it over thousands of years. I know you say you trust me, but here's what I really need you to do. I want and I need you to live your life every single day totally and completely dependent on me. If I don't, Paul, you can't. Right? Without my help, you are done. Paul, that's what I want you to do. So, I'm not going to take it away. I got a better idea. I'm going to see you through it. 
I'm not going to take it away, Paul. I'm going to see you through it. See, we think one way. We think remove it, remove it, remove it, remove it, remove it. And God thinks, how about I use it? 